And my third and final guest is the Honorable Judge Susan Zwick. Judge Zwick sits in the tr as a trial judge in the Law Division of the Circuit Court of Cook County, Illinois. She was elected to the bench in 1992 and previously has served in the complex litigation as well as the law motions. Judge Zwick is a member of the faculty for both the Judicial Education Conferences and New Judges Seminars and currently serves as an adjunct visiting professor in trial advocacy at the University of Notre Dame. Thanks everyone for being here tonight. Thank you. Why don't we start out with um, professional negligence involving nursing homes. A lot of people are in nursing homes these days and uh, why don't we start out talking about whether or not somebody has a case or what kind of cases uh, come up in nursing homes. Sure. I think typical cases in a nursing home setting, you remember you're dealing with people who are, who are elderly or who really have uh, great difficulties taking care, taking care of themselves. Uh, oftentimes in nursing home cases you have situations where uh, the patients just aren't uh, being attended to, um, either with uh, they develop bed sores or they are um, not properly assisted getting in and out of bed or around the facility. And there's a statute in Illinois, uh, the Nursing Home Act, and uh, that statute uh, has been uh, in effect to really protect people even with the most minor injuries that occur in a nursing home or a long-term care facility. Is there anything special about a nursing home act that you don't have in other types of cases? Yes, nursing home acts, if you prevail and you can show that there was uh, quote abuse or neglect, uh, if you prevail you can get attorney's fees, meaning that if you win your case the, the losing party, the nursing home, has to pay the attorney's fees and what that means is that you can have even a small injury case and you'll be able to find a lawyer who will represent you in that case because normally uh, when it's a regular personal injury case oftentimes there's a contingency fee meaning you get paid out of what you recover in a nursing home case uh, lawyers will take them even if there's very small injuries because uh, we know that even uh, if it's a small injury if we win the other side has to pay the legal fees and that's uh, a unique uh, uh, type of statute that provides that kind of remedy. What should somebody do if they think they or usually it's probably a relative or something because somebody's probably elderly, it'd be the family members, some things that they have a, a, a case against a nursing home, what's done, what's the procedures? Well optimistically first they're going to try to remedy it with the nursing home administrator and if it's something, a simple neglect case or if, uh, if they feel that their mom or their dad or their aunt isn't being taken care of, optimistically they're going to first go to the people who run the nursing home. But if they're not getting results, and in a situation with the nursing home, the person is um, can't take care of themselves, can't speak for themselves, then they're going to have to consult with a lawyer. And um, as Ron said, the policy is to try to make sure that um, the people who can't take care of themselves are protected by the law. And there's also a, a remedy, the, uh, the Department of Public Health in the state of Illinois, and most states have uh, those kinds of agencies, you can make a claim or a complaint without, without the need of a lawyer to the department and what they will do, that will trigger an investigation and they will send people out uh, from the state of Illinois who are trained to look through medical records, nursing home records, to determine if there was abuse or neglect and they will uh, do a very thorough investigation and come up with a report and that can result um, not so much a recovery for yourself or for, for the person that's injured in the nursing home, but can result in uh, fines and penalties against the nursing home. Probably a good way to kind of monitor and regulate nursing homes to make sure that they they are running their operations. Uh, yes, they and, and those are all available. Uh, you can, if you're looking into a, whether you want to place somebody at a nursing home, you can go online to the uh, Department of Public Health. Department of Aging, other administrative agencies in Illinois, and search that nursing home and find out if there's been uh, claims made against that nursing home and investigations made. And, and most of that information is available to the public, so that's a good place to start. What happens if you go through the administration, you go through the state, and things just don't work out and things aren't resolved? Um, you get to a lawyer and you want to file a lawsuit. Can the lawyer just file a lawsuit? I mean, what, what steps need to be taken? What do you need in, there, in those kind of cases? Just to add on something from a de defense perspective, if um, some of the allegations, if the case is filed and plaintiff is making various allegations of neglect or a, a negligence of actions that had occurred or didn't occur at the nursing home, if those are stemming at medical, then um, they would have to have that reviewed by an expert and they would need to attach an affidavit 
um, to their complaint when they file it indicating that you know there's merit and there were various deviations and here's how they occur. So it's just not like you just run out and file a lawsuit against a nursing home if there's some kind of medical uh, negligence issues involved, is that right? That's right. There's really some protection maybe for the nursing home too, and at least cases are at least screened, you know, you just don't, you hear somebody can just go file a suit, it isn't that simple in these kind of cases? It's not, and, I, and, and really in order to know whether you, know, you can file a case, you have to get all the records from that nursing home facility. And uh, in the case of a, a medical case involving a hospital or doctors like Lisa was referring to, you can't just yourself or get a lawyer to file that lawsuit. In a medical negligence case, not a nursing home case, you actually have to have the records reviewed by an expert, a doctor who practices uh, and has experience practicing medicine in Illinois and is licensed to review the records and sign their name to an affidavit that says that there is a meritorious or a, a reasonable basis for ma for filing the lawsuit before so, you can even file. So even though in the nursing home, because there is medical attention given there, it may be a case against the nursing home, but then it also may turn into some kind of a, a medical negligence case or whatever it is, which we're going to get into in just a bit about the actual medical malpractice cases. Is that correct? That's There's right. actually two standards. You've got the Nursing Home Act, which protects the residents of nursing homes from neglect and negligence and then if they are getting medical care in the nursing home you have a different standard which you alluded to which is the medical negligence standard so a nursing home patient may have both issues mm -hmm. but they're different standards and the higher of the two or the higher standard that more difficult one to prove would be the medical malpractice or the medical negligence issue and that happens all the time in nursing homes there's doctors that come in your, your internist, your, your general practitioner will come in and treat the patient just like they were your regular doctor. And so you have a doctor, a medical doctor in a nursing home facility. There's really two different theories of recovery going on. And in, unless you get all those records, you have to be able to determine where it is that the that the carelessness occurred. Maybe we should just now move on to a medical negligence case because we were, we're talking about that. Um, people get injured or people get, you know, you hear all the time, you know, my doctor did this wrong, I, did, I had this operation, something happened, and, you know, uh, I, I know the doctor did something wrong, uh, I want to sue him. And the, they come to the lawyer and they say, uh, this is what happened, I want to sue him, let's file a lawsuit. Is it, you know, do you, do you run out and file a lawsuit in that kind of situation? What do you do? How do you know if you have a med medical malpractice case? What steps do you need to take? Well, <clears throat> You, you have to have all the records, I think is probably the first step. And e even before that, you have to have a serious or significant injury. And I, I say that not because the law requires you to have a serious or significant injury to, fi to file a medical negligence case, but these cases are, are very costly to prove. And you really have to make sure that, you, uh, that you've been seriously injured and that you know, if, if it's a situation where a doctor does something wrong and you know, let's say they give you the wrong medication, Clearly, the doctor was careless, should have given you medicine A instead of medicine B, but, but the medicine that they gave you, the wrong medicine, didn't cause you any harm or injury. That's not a case, and, um, and that's really where it starts. Is but you mean is there may be negligence, but really there's no damages in this situation. And that right? happens more often than not. Most of the cases that at least c come into our office, oftentimes there's something that went wrong, but, but if there isn't a serious or significant injury, you know, it's the old no harm, no foul sort of uh, cliche. And just to add on to something Ron said, I think it's important for people to understand that just because they, they go and they receive some sort of medical treatment or medical care and their outcome is not what they expected or, you know, they had an unexpected bad outcome or unintended one, it doesn't mean that there was a doctor who was, was negligent. And why is that? Why, what, 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 if, to put it in layman's terms, why would that be? Because uh, what a doctor has to do is he has to act reasonable. Sometimes that requires that, that the physician makes judgment calls. And what he has to do is, or she as a doctor, or any medical care provider is, uh, in, in order to recover or to have a case, they have to show that, that what their actions did was a, a breach of the standard of care. In order to do that, what you would have to do is, basically the doctor has to show that, um, I mean, the doctor has the ability to do various things in the sense that sometimes uh, people are all different, and sometimes for the same condition, 